firstly guys, welcome back to Plan Adventures with Dan. We're on a shaky start, but don't worry. The shaky video will stop soon. We're just gonna drive somewhere where we can have a chat and explain how I've been in Thailand for six years. I've been chased with knives. I've blocked several punches. I've had several objects thrown at my head. And I've survived without a scratch. But this time, as you can see from the thumbnail, definitely got egg fried rice. Ah. Well, anyway, guys, welcome back to Talon Adventures with Dan. If you're a new subscriber or you're just watching the video now, hello, how's it going? Uh, my name's Dan, I've lived in Thailand now for six years. I managed to survive for the six years, still living, still kicking. No one's threw me off a balcony in Pattaya or Bangkok. I'm still here, I'm still alive. Apart from what you can see in the thumbnail, which I'll get onto later and I'll explain it. It's not going to be much of a long-winded video. I've not made a video now for about four months. Um, I've got my ear earbuds in at the moment, so I'm not sure how good the sound quality is. So I might not even use this footage. But I'm just going to drive over to the lake now, guys. And then we can have a bit of a chit chat, tell you the story, tell you what's been happening, tell you what's been going on. I've been working seven days a week, so I've just not had time to upload any videos for four months. Uh, but hopefully now I'm back and I'm kicking and taking YouTube by storm with my honest crazy videos. Oh, hang on, a bunch of bloody cows here, get through them. And Wildlife Central over here where I live. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to start concentrating on YouTube a lot more as well as still working seven days a week. Keep myself busy. I may be going back to England as well, guys, just to let you know. Might have no bloody choice because my Thailand Elite visa finishes on October the 2nd. Um, I can get an extension for six months because of COVID. They give everybody who's got a Thailand Elite visa, they can get an extra six months. But I have to travel to Bangkok, which is about, I don't know, six seven eight hours away for traveling um and get a stamp get a six month extension and then come back to Birmingham um, and decide what i'm gonna do i'm either gonna get a dependence visa get legally married um so i can get like a, a marriage visa or we're just gonna move to england guys and just set up shop there and see how it goes even though England just seems to be getting more bad and more bad and more bad. Anyway, I'll speak to you again at the lake, guys. All right. All right, guys. Managed to find a good spot. Found a tree. Bit of shade. Right on the edge of the lake, which I'll show you now. Really nice and peaceful, guys. Really nice and peaceful. But yeah, just found a nice tree to sit under. It's quiet. No one's going to bother me. It's all good stuff. It's all good stuff. Right guys, well what a nightmare. Um, I'm sure you've seen the thumbnail, you've seen the state on my face. I'll take my glasses off in a moment, uh, well soon, and um, show you my uh, war wounds. Uh, but it's been about, happened about five, five weeks ago I think now, maybe six weeks ago when it happened. Um, so yeah, not good, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Just wanted to catch up with everybody, subscribers, people that have watched me before. Um, you know, I've lived in Thailand for almost six years now. My Thailand Elite visa, like I said before, is almost coming to an end. So I can choose to either go and get the six month extension, go home, but, but, or, or go home back to England um, and build up my business more because I can, I can uh, employ people when I'm over there. It's very difficult to speak to people over the phone or on video call and uh, get them to work for you when you're based in Thailand. Uh, so it's a lot easier if I can go back to England and I can actually speak to potential new staff members and uh, grow my business back up, spend six months maybe back in England, uh, bring my wife over and my son, uh, just bring them over on a six month visa, uh, try and rent somewhere cheap, save up as much money as I can, uh, build the business up um, and then hopefully come back to Thailand. Or the other option is, like I said, go get the extension for my Thailand Elite Visa, the free extension they've offered me uh, because of COVID and decide 
what I'm going to properly do in the in the next six months before I definitely have to go back to England. Or I could just, like I said before, I could get a dependence visa or I could get married legally and uh, sort of like go down that route. Um, so yeah, only time will tell, guys. Only time will tell. I've also been working so hard recently, like just literally seven days a week, about nine, ten hours a day. Uh, just selling online on social media for the marketing services that I offer. Um, people don't really know much about my business, so I'm not really going to talk about it on air. Uh, but I just provide marketing for, for businesses, mainly people that can't afford marketing. They're like the people that I try to help, small businesses, new businesses. So I've been getting a lot of orders and stuff from Facebook, uh, around about 200 orders per week. So it's been quite good. On social media I didn't think they'd trust you really on social media but they seem to do they seem to throw the money at you especially when they can see there's a decent deal on offer so yeah I've just been concentrating on that um, because literally with my business before uh, that I had all my money has kind of stopped now I've kind of shut that business down so <clears throat> literally every week I've got to make money to live so I'm in the real world now like most people right let's go uh, travel around and then I'll tell you uh, about my story at the next stop about what happened to my face guys bloody disaster absolute disaster there's our friends the buffaloes loving life under the shade of the tree Okay. Oh, you got cows here. Don't mix with the buffaloes. Buffaloes stay on their own. This one chilling. Having a mud bath. Oh, warm. I'm not used to it. I'm used to staying at home now and working. Got the fan on and uh, I'll just sit in the room with the aircon. Just get on with my work, which I'll probably do for the rest of the day when I get back home after this video. Right, guys, I'm back at home. I've had to come back. Uh, it was too swampy and everything when I was driving around the lake, so it was, I didn't want to get the bike all messed up, so I had to come back here and try to get this video done. Luckily, uh, wife and the son upstairs out of the way so I can speak honest uh, tell you guys what happened so yeah guys I had a, uh, another argument with the missus um, seems to happen a lot uh, but it just seems to be a Thai thing to be honest from what I've uh, noticed and my experience I've had a few different partners while I've lived here for the past six years so very argumentative uh, big drama like when you fight it's not just like don't speak to you or anything it's like proper drama so yeah we had a big fight so i had to move out uh, got myself a nice cheap apartment that i've stayed at before but when i first come to bury ram i stayed there uh for a few months and yeah managed to get in there get myself sorted um so just got my head down started working <clears throat> and then i decided to to go out go to the bar give me something to do because i'm living alone it's quite boring when you live alone so yeah i had a couple of drinks uh, i wasn't really drunk but i'd been um, awake most of the night you know because of the the drama like uh thinking about what i'm gonna do am i gonna, am I gonna go back to england uh that kind of stuff so um decided to go home that evening around about midnight uh, I remember literally two minutes before it happened, I was on the scooter, a uh, PCX 150, and literally two minutes before it happened, I remember, and then I literally woke up uh, in the hospital, ho hospital being pushed on one of those bed trolleys. So I'm like, bloody hell, what, you know, what's happened? So I'm a bit shocked. Um, didn't remember a single thing um, and then I'm looking at myself I'm seeing that I'm uh, all bandaged up so they explained to me like uh, I've been in an accident um, 
but I, I'm all right. Um, you know, I'm I'm, uh, I'm not going to die. I don't think. So yeah, so uh, they take me to uh, like it's like an open floor. You don't you don't get your own room. It's like an open floor with loads of different beds. So like literally, when uh, they put me in my area, my space, there's around about 15 other people are looking at me that are in beds as well that are sick, and um, I just remember laying there going, oh my god. So I'm checking if I still got my wallet. Um, I've still got my phone. Luckily, I still had everything. So that was quite lucky. Um, I don't know how the hell, I still don't know how um, I got to the hospital. Um, I don't know what happened. I still have no memory of it, uh, which is really crazy. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't know it happened. I don't know if somebody smashed into me or, or anything. So anyway, I, I look at myself and I see that, you know, um, I'm pretty beat up. Um, I grab my phone and uh, like have a look on my phone at my face and see how bad my face was. Um, I'll put the pictures up now so you can have a look. And yeah, I was just super shocked because I really didn't know what happened. Um, and then I could feel the pain of everything. It was quite painful. So um, I thought the only person that I can text is my wife that I've had issues with. So uh text her and then when she woke up in the morning because it was still the middle of the night, uh, she's in the text and stuff. So she come she come round that day, asked me what happened, said I don't know. Everyone just presumed I was drunk and did something stupid. But when I look back at it now, I think I actually fell asleep because I was super tired because I've been awake like literally all night. I'd, have a, I'd had a couple of drinks. I wasn't drunk. I remember literally two minutes before it happened. I was almost back at the apartment. And then on a really quiet road where it's got like a corner, a bend, um, I must have like drove into the bend or someone must have come and, and hit me or, or something on that bike. I really don't know, but there was damage to the bike. Um, it looked like I landed face first uh, by the injuries. Um, didn't have a helmet on. I always drive the motorbike with just my hat and I've always been safe for six years. I'm, I'm normally quite a good driver. Um, I've drove back from the bar before being absolutely drunk and I've, I've always drove slowly and been, been careful. You know, I, I don't, I'm not a person who's like this when they're drunk, swaying all over the place. So yeah, super surprised guys. Um, it can happen to, to anyone. Um, the roads are dangerous as it is. But yeah, just... Um, we luckily managed to sort things out with a wife. Um, I was in hospital for about four or five days. Um, I had a scan to check the one any internal bleeding, which I was a bit worried about. But luckily that all come back all right. It cost me because I don't have insurance. Cost me around about ten thousand baht that I had to pay, which is about two hundred and fifty pounds, two hundred and sixty pounds. And yeah, guys, just bloody. <laughs> just need to be safe when you're driving around uh, Thailand. If you go to the bar, you're best off just getting like a grab uh, taxi, get someone to pick you up and take you home. It's fairly, fairly cheap. Um, but from now on, yeah, I'm going to be a hell of a lot more careful now. Now something bad's happened. I still can't feel some of my face. Yeah, I'll show you now. It's a bit hot out here, but I still can't feel. But literally now you can see, I think it opened up. So I might have to have this sliced again and get it fixed and get it sorted uh, but here like still all feel strange can't feel properly here can't feel properly but it, yeah it's an absolute mess yeah pretty stupid i can't believe it for six years i've always managed to to be okay um never really had much of a scratch and then all of a sudden something really bad happens. Uh, I was quite lucky really that I didn't break anything. That I didn't do some proper damage. Uh, so just be careful guys, you know, there's, there's so many people in Thailand that go drinking at the bars um, and drive back on the scooters. And there's so many accidents because of it. Now I wasn't that drunk and I still don't remember exactly what happened. And I think that I don't remember because of it was either one of two reasons. I ever fell asleep uh, because I was just super tired from all the stress and, and all the drama that, that, ha that happened previously. Um, 
or someone hit me and I don't remember because I banged my head. Obviously I banged my face, so I don't remember anything. So yeah, very crazy, very crazy thing that happened, very crazy story. Uh, literally come out of the hospital, come back to uh, the wife's home and um, about a week later, everybody got COVID. <laughs> So, um, started off with a with her son, and then it went over to our son, William, who's one year old, and then I think Pim got it, and I just got some sniffles or, or whatever. I, I didn't, I don't think that I had COVID, but I might have done because everybody else had had it, but wasn't as bad as what I thought it'd be, and I'd never had it like since it started. So yeah, very crazy story, guys. Don't want to keep droning on. Um, I'm gonna start um, posting more videos and stuff. Um, try and keep busy with it all. I am working seven days a week, but I'll get the videos in as well, guys, I promise. Uh, so please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and I'll catch you on the next video. If you've got any questions or anything, pop them in the comments, guys, I'll answer. Cheers for now. Talent Adventures with Dan, over and out.